Hey, I'm Orixi and welcome to the second episode of my HTML5 tutorial series. So if you haven't watched the first episode, then I will highly recommend you to do so by clicking the annotation on the screen. So in the last episode, this is what we have managed to do. So we have a Canva and we draw the letter P moving down right. And eventually when it goes out of bound, the message out of bound is displayed in the console log. So this is the code we have so far. Um, I will put it in the description if you want to download it. So right now, in order to test if it's out of bound, we check if the X value is over 500, which is the size of the Canva. And if it's the case, we display a message. So detecting that it's out of bound is great, but it would be a lot better if we could do something about it. So what we are going to do is to make it bounce. And to do that, we will simply um, change the value of X to a negative value. So when um, the speed X is put it positive, it moves to the right. But when it's negative, it will move to the left. So let's just save and um, drag our HTML file into a new Google Chrome page. And as you can see, the letter P goes to the right. And when it will reach the wall, it will turn back. So the speed will change and move to the left exactly like we wanted. But there's still a little problem because when it goes below zero, it does not bounce. So it will continue forever and we won't be able to see anything. So we are going to change that too. So what we are going to do is to just copy paste this code, but instead of testing if the X is over 500, we'll test if it's below zero. And if it's the case, then we will put the speed back to 30. And while we're at it, we will also copy paste all this for the Y. Um, so if the Y is over, then we will change the speed Y for minus five. And if it's below zero, we will change the speed for five. And yeah, another thing I want to change is the set interval. So right now the um, frame rate is two frames per second, which is very slow. So I'm going to change that for um, 40 milliseconds between each frame, which is the equivalent of 25 frames per second. So let's check how it looks. So go back to Google Chrome. And there we go, we got our bouncing P. When it reached the bottom, it goes back and it will bounce forever, pretty much. So now what I will do is to simply optimize the code without changing the functionalities. So there are two main issues with our code so far. Um, the first one concerns the out of bound. So if we want to change out of bound for bouncing, for example, we need to change it at four different places. And we need to remember, oh yeah, there are four places that needs it. Well, for now, it's not really a big issue because we only have four different spots. But when the code becomes bigger, um, it can become an issue. So a great way to fix that is to um, create a variable that is called message at the top, which has the value of your message. And then instead of hard coding bouncing everywhere, we simply um, tell the browser a hey, console log message and message is bouncing. So if we want to change the message, we simply need to do so um, at the top. Now the other problem concerned the value 500. So right now 500 is the size of our Canva, but if we want to change it, if we change it someday, we need to remember, oh yeah, um, in the update function, I use 500 because it's the height of the Canva. You need to remember that. So once again, you never want to hard code things in function. You always put a variable for it. So what we will do is create a variable called height, which will be 500, and a variable called width, which will be 500. And instead of putting 500 there, we will simply put width and height. And by convention, if it's a constant, so a value that does not change, you put it in capital. Message could be in capital. I put it in. Um, not capital, but it's not really a big deal. So there we go, a lot better. So far, so good, but there is still a little problem. It's the value 30. So um, if we want to change the speed x, let's say now it's 20, we need to remember that the value is used in the update function, which is not really cool. So what we are going to do is to um, use, simply reverse the value of speed x without hard coding it. So how to do it, we simply say, hey, the speed becomes the opposite of the speed. 
and we will do the same thing here. So if the speed was positive, now it becomes negative. And if the speed was negative, it becomes positive. So that's a way to do it. And we will do the same thing here. Um, so if it was positive, it become negative, negative becomes positive. So now we can see that the content of our condition, so console log message, speed act becomes the opposite of speed x, is exactly the same here and here. So if it's over with, uh, over the width, we are going to do that code. If it's below zero, we are going to do the same code. And when this happens, we can um, mix the two. So what we will do is if x is below zero or this is the or sign or x is above the width, we are going to display the message. So there we go. And we can do the same thing here. So if y is below zero, we do that. And if it's above i, we also do this like this. So like I just said, this is the or sign. So in order for the wall expression to be true, either the first expression or the second expression needs to be true. Um, so one or the other. There is also the n sign. Um, if you put n here, then this needs to be true and this needs to be true in order to go inside the content of the condition, which is which in this case is only possible if the width is negative. So x is below zero and x is above minus 10 would be true. So we go here. So one thing I want to change to is the value p right there. So p represent the name in a way of the um, of the player we are creating. So right there in the property of the player, we will add a new value, which will be p. Um, and instead of writing p directly, we would never want to write things directly. We always want to make a reference and then use the reference, the variable. So now we will simply fill text with the value, the value name, which is p. This is exactly the same thing. So if we save, go to Google Chrome and um, refresh the page, we will see exactly the same thing than before, but the code is a lot clearer. So now let's say that we want to add a new entity in our game, an enemy. So in order to do that, it's kind of annoying because we will need to double our code, but let's do it anyway. Let's just restructure this a little bit. So there we go. So we have um, our player here. Don't forget that the two slash means a comment. So this will be ignored by the browser. And we will copy paste this and call it enemy. Enemy with um, other values. It can be pretty much anything we want. Speed x and the name. Now we have a little problem because we are already using the value x. So if we say x is 50 and then x is 150, then this will overwrite our player. And this is not what we want. We need to find a new name for our or variable and we will call it enemy underscore x. Let's do this for all the variables. So there we go, we got our enemy. And right here in the update function, we will need to change it, double the code once again, um, because we have two entities. So let's do it that way. So we got our enemy and um, there we go. We just add enemy underscore in front of every single variable. Um, like this. So now let's just check how it looks in the browser. So just refresh the page. And as you can see, we got our two letters that moves around independently. And that's pretty much what we wanted. So I guess that will be pretty much it about this episode. I hope you liked it. And in the next episode, what we'll be doing is optimizing this code using objects. So object is a very important concept in JavaScript. It's pretty much the core of the language. And you will be able to see this episode on my um, second account, um, YouTube account called Raining Chain. I will put the link in the description. You can also click the annotation on the screen to check the next episode. So thanks again for watching and see ya.